Get cool. So I'll start on what's co what concept art is. It's a visual representation of an idea. And it's used mu mainly during uh, production stage, right before you decide what your game's going to be like. Uh, and what kind of characters you want to go, uh, you want to put in your game. It's mainly for comics, movies, games, everything. It comes in the form of storyboard as well for movies, just quick sketches for character development. And even basic architecture comes in the form of concept art before you start. So that those pictures show how I had to develop one of the characters for a unit. And first I had to sketch it, and I had a friend pose for me like that, and then I drew it out and colored it in Photoshop. And yeah, why it's important is because it helps visualize the basic idea and the look and feel of the game. At first, if you guys want to have, if you want to be indie game developers, you have to explain how exactly you want the game characters to look like and how the game's going to appear overall. Clients don't usually understand it if you just tell them in words. Pictures are going to be a lot easier to explain. And it also serves as an initial point of reference because as you keep developing the game, your ideas keep changing and the design eventually changes and the final product may not look anything like what you started off with. So this is one of the models that I made without concept art. And until I finished designing it, I hadn't realized that most of it was actually inspiration drawn. It's not really completely original. Because what had happened is I've got Charlie Chaplin and Shrek and a bit of Mike Wazowski and an octopus right down there. <laughs> so yeah, not exactly original right there. So. You have to learn how to get better at concept art. Um, I started off with likes of Tifa and oil paintings and then got better by practice. You have to keep sketching all the time. Never put that pencil down. You have to, anything that you see that you find interesting, inspiring, just keep sketching at all times. Experiment with perspective. Do you guys know what perspective drawings are? Yep, things get smaller as they get far, yep and explore with different mediums. Some people it works with pencil, but if you can't handle that, just go with digital, graphics tablet, whatever. And there are online tutorials everywhere for everything. Just Google how to draw blank and you get it. But the most important thing is you have to know the design theory because the clients are not going to come and give you exact things that you can Google. You have to be able to know what, how to customize something for them and how to get it exactly how they need it. You have to get out of your comfort zone. For example, I had difficulty drawing hands. So instead of avoiding them, I had to keep sketching every hand that I find. Everyone just show me a hand and I'll sketch it. And as I kept practicing, that's how I got out of the comfort zone and started getting more comfortable with drawing everything. And if you fail, just learn from it. Uh, there are various artistic mediums. Traditional methods are pencil sketching, charcoal art, sculpting. Sculpting is mainly used if you want to develop it in, into a 3D model for 3D games. Uh, most of the 3D animation movies use sculpting as well because it's a lot easier than following up from 2D sketches. And digital art, on the other hand, it's flexible and easier, but there's the danger of um, following through with the effects that it has and changing it completely as well. So always start with pencil if you can, and then follow on to the digital art. And there are lots of software that you can use. Sketchbook Pro is free for students as well, yeah? Autodesk items, and Maya's <coughs> two years free, I think, two to three yeah, years. Well, you can get a personal learning edition of Maya as well. It has a watermark over the perspective view, but apart from that, it's fine. Yeah, and also photo manipulation. That's what I use. Um, I'll more on that later with references. So yeah, um, those two on the side were drawings that I made for a comic. And those are the stock images that I used. Try to significantly change what you see. Don't try to draw exactly what you see. Um, stock images, you can find them all over DeviantArt, just Google images everywhere. And try to build a reference library, because you might not always find what you need. But if you see something interesting, save it. Keep a separate reference library just for yourself and use a range of references 
when you're making a creature, you have to use a hybrid of many different things that you see, make a montage on Photoshop, and then draw from it. And even if you want to copy directly from an image, do that. But just make sure that you don't cr take credit for it or publish it anywhere. That's just for practice. And that's the first page of a comic that I made. And yeah, I followed mostly online tutorials because you have everything for that. But do you really need a degree to do things like this? Answer is no, you don't really need it. But it is useful. Considering that you don't learn the hard things like design theory, you can't really Google things like, tell me everything about design. But in uni, they actually tell you what it is and explain it differently. And uh, you also get valuable feedback from your lecturers and tutors, which you can't really get from online tutorials. You're just happy with what you do. And you decide to be a basement artist, and no one knows about you. You have to be able to contact, uh, contact people, start networking, even through your lecturers, other students. Mostly that's the way they, indie game developers, they just keep continuing with their groups, and they make games in the future. So, and also deadlines. When you're working by yourself, you don't really stick to deadlines unless you're really, really ambitious. But in uni, you're forced to do that. Yes, you have yep. to stick to your deadlines. And also, it gives you time to prepare for things. You have three years of assembling uh, designs for your portfolio. And also, you have a formal qualification which substitutes for the experience that every job uh, requires. So how do you get noticed? Like I said, build networks. Have an online portfolio, at least in Facebook, if you want to. As long as someone can tell, oh, I've heard of this person, they can do uh, design really well. And someone wants to know how your design actually looks, you need to have some kind of reference that they can see. And also, make tutorials. That's the best way to get someone to view your page, because your page rank goes high when you make tutorials. Everyone Googles how to do things rather than seeing designs. And also, volunteer. Volunteer like even events like CGBC. You get to meet a lot of industry professionals, and they might even give you and some also people that can connect you to industry professionals. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So thanks for listening. <laughs> yep, does anyone have any questions? And do you guys want to do anything else with Unreal? Cool things? Hey, you have a question? Um, I'm working on making my own portfolio for when I try to do animation oh, wow. and stuff. Yeah. So instead of like just pictures and stuff, would I also have to write about like um, how I got to it, like say do a couple of Yeah, work in process. Yeah. Uh, if you if you do work in progress uh, pictures, they'd like employees usually like to know how your thought process is and how it works. So rather than the final product, it's better to actually put yeah. Working process as well. And if you've got a cool story behind something you can draw, then it's even better. Yeah.